we just went on a blind date in front of everyone. <laughs> I need like a champagne <laughs> IV. I think we should leave now. <laughs> We're just gonna run. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming. Um, we're going to do our best to have a cogent uh, conversation in front of everyone that is not embarrassing and you're not supposed to heckle us, but I'll say if you want to heckle us, that's totally fine and you can interject whenever you want. Um, but now I just need to read the intro, which is like sort of a spiel. So just go with me here. Um, Hello, and welcome to List's new podcast, The Guest. Each of these episodes features a different guest in conversation with someone who really knows them. We are recording this episode after dinner with our friends in London who have stayed on to listen to tonight's chat. I'm Steph Yatka, the senior fashion news editor of Vogue, and as someone who's constantly on the hunt for new designers, I'm very happy to introduce Laura Luena Irons and Emma Chapova of Chapova Luena. Um, we first met each other about four years ago when I received a very urgent all caps email from a colleague who was like, you need to meet these designers. They are you. And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, and then I went to meet them and realized that they are me <laughs> and I am them. And we've been very good friends and fashion world colleagues ever since. Um, and one of the things that I admire most about them is really their free spirits, but also how kind they are. I think everyone in this room will know that they are very humble and great to be around. And so I'm very happy to introduce them on this podcast. Aw, thank you so much. <laughs> That's so sweet. Um, so one of the first things I heard about you was that you met on the first day of Central St. Martin's. Is this true? Yes. Yes, it is true. We were we were not the first people to talk to each other, but we, we were definitely the second. we were the second. We definitely we met on the first day of CSM, and we studied together for six years, doing our MA as a duo. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, did you get along right away? Yeah, Emma was very loud. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was very quiet and shy. Yeah, it's true. So we kind of like gravitated towards each we, other, I think. I think initially away from each other. And then I had a Halloween party, which Laura came to. And then I think since then, we just became best say? friends. That you, Laura was always too nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then I she got to know me. <laughs> everyone was very fashiony and Laura was always so nice and like... So not like everyone else, which is what made me love her. <laughs> and when did you know that you wanted to do the MA together and really try to have a brand together? Um, I think it was when we were on the BA doing our final collections and like I would have one idea and then hide under the table in the BA studio and wouldn't come out and Emma would have a million ideas and like try to do all of them but not have enough time. And then we realized just, that like, they wouldn't. You know, like, they wouldn't come into full fruition how I wanted them to. Yeah, but and we'd just, like, talk about it all the time yeah. and realize that we, we really always talked each about other. it. Ever since yeah. we met, we talked about it. I think we we always knew that it wasn't realistic to have a brand as a single person. I think that's what we knew. Yeah. We wanted to do too much and, like... We had, yeah, too many ideas. It was too and... much for one person. Yeah. And But I think that what we knew since the beginning was that uh, it was really hard to find someone that you can, like, get you can do this on this level yeah, who gets you in that way yeah and we always got each other yeah. mm -hmm. and it's been smooth sailing ever since I wouldn't go Somewhat. that far <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what it was like to graduate from school and you sort of immediately started selling collections like you went didn't you well there was a year and a I half it was a year of depression. <laughs> we call we it call our it year, year of depression. <laughs> it well, was the year of figuring it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We graduated and nothing went our way. And it, nothing happened the way we thought it was going to happen. And we were in a studio we couldn't afford, living a life we couldn't afford. <laughs> Working jobs and pubs. Yeah, like living in like tiny rooms trying to figure it out. And um, every single month was like if we don't get, like, an award or something happens, we won't, can't make it. And we were yeah. like, okay, We were three lucky months. in that way that we did yeah. win a, a few awards. We got a few grants. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we were just like, 
we'll just use the money yeah. to keep going, to make collections, to do what we want to do. Yeah. And if it works by the end of the year, then we'll keep going. And if it doesn't, we'll find something else to do. Yeah. But luckily, we got our showroom, we got, we got our first sales, yeah. and from well, we there, did. We then, did kind of go get into fashion by selling clothes rather yeah. than having shows and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. From there, it just like we realized that that was the right path because you needed money to make the next one yeah. and the next one. So <laughs> and we, we just continued that. <laughs> and yeah, it's worked out. Mm-hmm. What was it like to make those first collections for production? You know, I think so many designers. <laughs> are used to doing the creative process and then there becomes like the business process? Um, A lot of learning. It was, we didn't think that anyone would ever make our skirts and we were told by everyone that no one would ever make our skirts. So we actually made the first ones ourselves Mm -hmm. and uh, we would cut, I cut belts out with scissors and you know, we pleated things with irons and it was all just, I still don't believe that people have those first skirts because they should probably (laughs) fall apart. I don't even know. They're precious. Yeah. We saw one of them in real life yeah. recently and we're just like it's still, it's still together, together. <laughs> <laughs> but it, we went and like uh you know got rejected by like 40 factories before we found one that would make our stuff and yeah that was kind of it but then we found one yeah you find one and you start building it up and you yeah. learn a lot and it just goes from there really yeah so far so good how um important was it when you became a part of the LVMH prize and sort of I mean that was the last time we had seen each other before the pandemic. And I remember it being such a special day. And there were so many other designers there who we all love. And then suddenly the world ended. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a really, we waited for a while to like apply for it until yeah. we were ready. And we thought that like we were confident to go to like that kind of platform and speak about our work and yeah. show people our work. So Yeah, we wanted to be really, really sure in it before we want, we could show it and talk about it. And we wanted to have like a lot something behind us before we do it, and we like try to you know I don't know like win an award or like do something so like legitimate, and it's obviously at an amazing platform. Yeah, and we've met so many nice people. Yeah, it was it was really really good. It we was loved amazing. It. And then the world ended. Yeah, for mm-hmm. a while. Yeah, it was really sad. Mm-hmm. And then we zoomed a lot. And then we yeah. zoomed a lot. And we tried to put it back together. And now we're here. Yeah. <laughs> it no. feels like yesterday. Yeah, it does. also a million years ago. It's very weird. Yeah. Um, but in the time since then, so many people have worn your clothes, like Dua Lipa, Harry Styles, Bad Bunny. You sent me a full <laughs> list of all the celebrities. Let me just read through them. Kylie Jenner, Hailey Bieber, Rosalia, <laughs> Michaela Cole, Iris Law, Harry Neff, Paloma. Which are some of your favorite looks that you've seen sort of out in the world? I just oh. think the random people walking down the street. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> people will send us pictures of like a person down walking down the street in a skirt. And we're like, oh my God, it's out in the wild. And like someone just owns it. And it's, I think that's what's uh, crazy. I yeah. think a celebrity, like... I think that's, I think it's really strange that people have our baby skirts and like there are, is that now they're. They are little babies like when so, we make them in the studio. Yeah. You don't really see like the reproduction of them in the yeah. factory. So and when we send different. them out, they're just like. And like we never see the different ones because they're all like one of yeah. a kind skirts. And mm-hmm. then, so it's really nice to see them all. all but even all people. the dresses. Like we spend so much time like picking the fabrics and doing the prints and like yeah. putting them together. Like, I don't think everyone realizes the, the time, like, we, like, obsess over all the details. Yeah. And then they're, like, just, like, out in the world. And you're just like, oh, my God, people like them. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever run into someone on the street, like, a complete stranger and been like, <gasps> we went to the Dover Street Market changeover. It was, like, the first day. And there was a girl. <laughs> it was a see-through bag that year. And someone had a skirt that they had just bought. And that was amazing we got very excited that was the first season we were in yeah as well that was the best moment and we followed her wanting to be like oh my god you got a skirt and then we both chickened out and ran away i got like a glimpse of her and she did not look like she would be friendly (laughs) (laughs) that's so funny because in new york sometimes people come up to me and they're like are you the designer of chipotle i'm like no i'm just their stalker (laughs) so slash pr (laughs) slash best friend yeah (laughs) Um, So another huge component of your brand that 
maybe doesn't get enough press is sort of the way that you work really sustainably. Why was that a decision that you made at the beginning of launching this brand? I think I think it was really you go. Well, I just <laughs> think that if we at the time when we were launching a brand, it was there was no other way that we were going to have a brand. Um, and also, we just we just felt responsible for like the people working on it and the way that it was going to be made. And I think it's really hard because now growing, it's definitely hard to be 100% sustainable and we're absolutely not. No one is. Um, but I think it's really important to try as hard as you can in, in every way that you can. Yeah, we didn't want to just put clothes out there for yeah. the hell of it. Like, it felt a bit well, wasteful. It started with skirts, and, mm -hmm. like, the skirts are all completely upcycled, and they also have a lot of history. Like, every apron is, wo is like, hand, like, you know, like, woven and uh, is hundreds of years old, and it has, like, so much history, and it's really special, and we wanted these things to be kept and treasured rather than, like, the quick cycle. So I don't know if people realize that every one of the skirts is like a traditional Bulgarian textile. That how do you find them? Um, my mom finds them. I started finding them on auction sites, and then I now my mom works for us as like she sources all of the textiles, um, and it's through like just auction sites like whatsapp facebook we put out ads we we talk to like a million different people they think we're always starting like um restaurants that are like <laughs> bulgarian themed and we're gonna like maybe like make pillows or hang them on the wall they have no idea what we're using them for um but yeah we just made like a network of, mm -hmm. of people um but i don't think people realize that Everyone in Bulgaria has so many of them. Yeah, they used to be woven for dowries by families. So, like, the mom and the grandma would weave them and then give them out to, like, the whole village um, when, like, the daughter got married. So, and then, like, you would weave hundreds of them from the time your daughter is born to the time she's, like, you know, in the olden days or whatever, like, 17, and she's getting married. So it would be years of... Um, weaving things to gift. So that's why they're kept like in pristine condition. Everyone has them in every household. Mm -hmm. Do the different colors and the different patterns mean different things? Yeah, the patterns have like so many different meanings. It's all very like fertility based mm -hmm. and like kind of like, you know. Um, in different but, regions. But all different the different stream. regions have the different colors, the different patterns, the different stripes. Um, so we do a lot of different kind of themed yeah. skirts. We take a while to collect, like there's some special ones and we take a while to collect them and then yeah. when we have enough, we'll do like one season of like the special black skirt with the embroidery. Yeah. So we try to slowly collect different ones, but there are certain ones that we can get a lot of. Yeah. So there's a lot of history woven in. There is. I yeah. feel like you told me a story once of a woman who would like go into the town square <coughs> and like ring a bell and be like, give me your yeah. <laughs> tapestry. They actually do it the same way that they like sell watermelons. <laughs> it's like a guy in a car with like a bell and you go around the village and you're like, I'm selling watermelons or like I'm buying aprons. And they do like the same thing. So because aprons are like... Um, to be honest, like right now in the country, like they're just discarded. No one cares about them. They'll sell them for cents, like because it's like, you know, a former communist state that now is like, you know, trying to forget its past. So I think they're not really treasured in the same way. So they're really kind of sold off. And part of, I think, people think they're really special and are like proud of their history. And then some somehow it's also trying to be forgotten so um they're quite they're available and we've always thought they're beautiful and they are beautiful mm -hmm. definitely and you do a lot of sourcing of other little bits and bobs like I think on all of our dresses we have like this key ring from Buffalo New York mm -hmm. and all of our little brooches how do you find all of the other sort of vintage or dead stock jewelry and accessories we find them on like auction sites or eBay or like we do. random places like that. I think that we've always just loved like little charms 
and we find them from yeah. all over the place. A lot of the brooches and things we so also like design and we get cast mm -hmm. um, by like a very small like family casting place um, in Sofia and then all, everything else we we get on eBay pretty much but it's all from like different places and like it's a lot of like crazy yeah. communication. I think it's fun just like I think we love the like thrifting and finding things like special things that have meaning and like using them because mm -hmm. like so many things are just thrown away. Have you ever had someone who you've like bought a keychain from or a fabric from come back to you later and be like oh my god I saw that skirt on Bad Bunny or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you had that one guy that sent you a design of a skirt yeah. afterwards. <laughs> he designed his own Chipotle skirt yeah. and then sent us drawings. I have a lot of like, um, you know, <laughs> Bulgarian like kind of like auctioneers that are like collecting stuff for me that eventually will understand where they wind up and will be like, oh, how about this? And they'll like kind of pitch skirt ideas to me. Which is really sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so we could branch out if we wanted to. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, you recently launch, launched, I'm doing soft quotes, menswear. Which, you know, the clothing has always been sort of genderless and for everyone. Yeah. But what made you feel like now was the right moment to take on designing menswear in a certain way? Yeah, we don't. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we ever thought of it as menswear and women's wear. I think that yeah. it was just buyers approached us and was like, let's do menswear. And we're like, okay, can we just yeah. make the same thing <laughs> in a fit that fits a man better than women's clothes? And they're like, sure. Yeah. So... The menswear is the same as the women's wear, really. They just fits better. And yeah. I think that's how we'll every continue single, to do it. Yeah, everything that we've done has been that way. It's just, like, people ask us for it. And if there's, like, a need for it or, like, someone wants it, then they'll ask for it. Yeah. Because I don't think, like, I think very happily, like, men have worn our stuff before. And I think it's been, it's done well. And I think that's why they kind of asked for it. So... I think it's yeah. nice to like grow in that way where it's not like you're like, I'm launching menswear because mm -hmm. yeah. we couldn't really. Yeah. I think if we tried to design menswear, it would just yeah, we would fail. <laughs> be really weird. It's a very organic expansion. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And as we were just talking on the phone with my boyfriend, who was like, did you tell them that I love wearing the skirt? <laughs> Which is really, it's becoming a problem for people who have a shared closet. Because I used to have my section, and it has become our section. <laughs> and I would like to sort of reclaim. Oh, <laughs> I wish I had that happy. problem. <laughs> Do you feel like fashion in general is becoming more open-minded or more accepting of really the gender spectrum? You know, we've always been so siloed in men's fashion week and women's fashion week and men's buyers and women's buyers. Yeah. I, I hope so. I hope so. But I think there's still, like, there's a divide which you can't get past. You know, you always do get women's buyers and men's buyers. And I think they I try mean, their... The only thing is, like, it fits differently. So It does fit differently. You want, you want a garment to fit you right. Yeah. But why does it have to be designed differently? I just don't think it should be designed differently. I think that's the... I mean, I, I, yeah, I can't design it differently. <laughs> um, and we sort of touched on this before, but as two female creatives, you also own your own business. But I know you've got a lot of support behind the scenes. Tell us yeah. about how you sort of make it work as business owners. Oh, we couldn't do it without our families. Yeah. We have a lot, like, we have my mom and my sister that like handle all the financial parts and do our cash flows and accounting. And then we have Emma's dad who also advises us on yeah. our other side of the business and yeah. your mom that sources for yeah. us. And he's my dad is like very proudly on LinkedIn, like director <laughs> of supply chain at <laughs> And all his like very corporate like ex-colleagues are like, congratulations on your <laughs> work anniversary. <laughs> um so yeah, but we have our families. Yeah. We've been very lucky in that way. Yeah. I think for a while they were just like, will it work? I don't think we knew what we were ever getting into because we didn't think that anyone would buy our skirts. So, and then matches like, you know, launched them with like a sweater and then everyone was like, oh, it's a skirt. <laughs> so then it worked. Yeah. And then they were like, well, I guess we can work for you then. They were yeah. both retired and they've come out mm -hmm. of retirement to work for Chipotle for Luana, so. Yeah. <laughs> and is it all smooth sailing or are there? No. 
<laughs> I don't think any business is smooth sailing. There's never been a moment of smooth sailing. <laughs> it's constant things going wrong. I mean, that's half the fun of it and half the it's not stress fun. of it. <laughs> but, I mean, we can't imagine doing anything else. It's not, yeah. It's really hard <laughs> every <True> day. <laughs> but I think it's important to actually say how it is because it's really mm. hard every day. But, you, you, yeah, it's, you don't learn that stuff in uni or... Like, you don't learn how to run a business and half of, like, a tiny percentage of the job is designing and the rest of it is production, business plans, cash flow. Like, if you don't have a good yeah. cash flow, then you don't, you can't run your business. Yeah. So it's like all of those things add up. But, yeah, um, yeah after, like, four years, how many yeah. years? Four years. <laughs> We're getting the hang of it. Okay, now. <laughs> how much, how would you say your time is divided between, let's say, ideating, researching, designing versus managing, oh doing business? Well, sometimes it feels like, um, I think that everyone will tell you that, you know, it's like, oh, it's a day of designing and like, you know, all the rest of the day is not. But sometimes it feels like a real pressure to like churn stuff out for like capsules or whatever. And it sometimes doesn't feel like you have the proper time to think things through. Yeah. Um, but it is a lot of, it's a lot less designing than it is at everything else. But once, you, once you're able to hire people, it changes your life. And I think it's the best decision we've ever made is yeah. to hire help. And, um, we reassess it every season, really. Yeah. We try and find ways to We try to do to more and more designing. More designing. Like, find, I think when you start, you do everything. So you, like, even before our parents got on board, you have to do absolutely every tiny little bit. Yeah. And then you slowly realize that you have to like hire people, get people to help you and slowly get back to designing. So we're still trying to like get back to... But we were lucky because we could really trust our parents to like advise yeah. us. I think it's hard in the beginning if you're not in that kind of situation. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But yeah. I don't have no idea what the percentage is, but we try to do as much designing as possible. Yeah. We can't really turn that bit off, mm -hmm. even when and you're sleeping. How do you, you know, your the fashion calendar, love it or hate it, is you know relies on very firm dates, delivery <coughs> dates, show dates, fashion week dates. How do you stay inspired and find creativity in these sort of defined windows of the year? I mean. I think it's, we have a schedule that we just, like, have weeks of researching and designing and stuff. I think it's pretty easy. It's ha yeah. it's helpful being two people. You yeah. can always get yourself out of bad, you know, head spaces. And um, sometimes it's a really good idea to take a break, which we've never done. I think we took our first vacation, like, a month ago, ever. Yeah, it was needed. So, <laughs> but otherwise, I think we find it pretty easy to do that. Yeah, it is very helpful having I think two it, people. In lockdown, it was quite hard to be inspired because, mm -hmm. like, you were just, like, you know, always at a computer at home. But yeah. I think it, we find it easy. I mean, it's the best bit, so. Yeah. We're raring to get into that bit. And then the rest of it, we're like, ugh. Yeah. Okay. Um, during the lockdowns, you produced, I mean, I don't want to say I'm biased, but I've liked every collection. But I would say from a critical perspective <laughs> during the lockdowns, you really produced clothing that pushed your aesthetic into a new place. You launched a lot of new categories. You did the pants. You did the jeans. You did not menswear, but like you expanded your sizing. You've done children's wear. Did you feel like that period was particularly fortifying creatively for you? <clears throat> I think we were Which seasons with this. We were we were <laughs> we were um we were actually like really obviously affected by COVID and we were actually like uh at a point where we didn't have any money and we it was like really hard times and I think we were just like um trying to like reorganize and you know kind of like do everything we possibly could. Yeah, we did a lot of reshuffling. Yeah. I I don't I think that it was like trying to like not grow a little, little by little. Yeah. There was a time where we actually got to sit back and look at the business and look what we wanted to do and how we wanted to continue, I think. Yeah. I think it's it's been so long since that, but I do remember a lot of Zooms with you because we were apart during it as well, which was yeah. really weird, weird to be designing yeah. apart because you were in Reading and I was in London. Yeah. So, but we basically sat on Zoom every day being like, what do we actually want to do though? Like... It was a lot of thinking 
Mm-hmm. And yeah. It was also half of it was not up to us. It was like, you know, some retailers were like not growing and then like some were and then they were like asking us to do things, which, you know, we wouldn't, we did children's wear because I made my niece like a dress for her birthday. And then that's how we sold children's wear. Um, and then like, you know, some, yeah. I think everything was a bit like that. We didn't really. But with the children's wear, we realized that we could use all our leftover fabrics. Mm-hmm. Like we produced a small amount just to make sure that we have enough for production. And that small amount we didn't know what to do with. So it fit into that category yeah. so well. So, um, yeah, we we're really happy to continue it. But yeah, yeah, it kind of, a lot of things kind of just like organically happen. Mm-hmm. And then if they work, we continue them. Yeah. Which is how we like it. <laughs> And you've Chipova Luenaed almost everything. Dresses, shirts, <laughs> tops, skirts, socks, earrings, necklaces. Is there something that you haven't made yet that you'd really like to make? Dogwear. Shoes. <laughs> so dogwear and shoes. And that's yes. not letting me do it yet. <laughs> We're doing shoes. <laughs> you heard it here first. List yeah. exclusive. This is an exclusive. <laughs> mm-hmm. What yeah. would your shoes look like? Or should we not talk about it? We shouldn't talk about it. Okay. <laughs> it's top secret. It's very secret. And they've been drawing the same shoes for four years. Really? Yes, yeah, so we have to make them now. <laughs> okay, we'll try to sneak a pic from the studio. <laughs> um, so let's like flash back to your youths. Emma and I had parallel youths <laughs> in did. the state of New Jersey in the United States, though so Emma's from Bulgaria. Laura was in England. Um, but when did you first know growing up that you wanted to be a designer? Oh. You go first. Um, Yours is your mom. Yeah, yeah. My, well, yeah, kind of. My, well, my mom wanted to be a fashion designer, but in communist Bulgaria, she couldn't study fashion design, so she studied toy design. But she read about, like, Stella McCartney in a women's magazine. And that's how I even knew about St. Martin's, because I was in, like, New Jersey in a high school, and they were like, you can't move to England. What are you talking about? Um, so that's how I ended up going to St. Martin's. It was complete, like, I went to an off-chance interview in New York, um, I didn't really know anything about anything, but I, I just wanted to do it. Um, I just decided. I d- nothing really big happened except that my mom had wanted to do it. Um, yeah. I don't have a great answer. That's a great answer. What do you mean? I, know, I just naturally, but I was, I always like, I always like You always drew. loved fashion. I always drew. Mm-hmm. And then I think that it naturally like evolved. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know how I ended up doing fashion. Through like crafts. I mean, I always just that. liked making things and drawing weird monsters. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think mine was more through craft and I did textiles and liked print and color. And it kind of grew from there, I guess. I just liked art and then, yeah, ended up at St. Martin's after a half nearly yeah, not making it. Yeah, we actually it. have like a, we, we like shouldn't have ended up being in the same year. For many, many Amer- reasons. For many reasons. But I was like a year older from my grade. Laura had this like detour year. Um, then she didn't get into CSM. Then like five days later, they were like, we made a mistake and you did get in. <laughs> and then we ended up in the same so class. You cast. So it was mm-hmm. it was pretty. All, yeah. It was Mentally. written in the stars. Exactly. It was. Have you done your horoscopes together? <laughs> like... <laughs> Pro- um, probably like five years no, ago. No, we're like a good match. What I are mean, your stars? I'm Leo and a Taurus. All of Emma's best friends have always been yeah. born on 15th of May. Every so single best friend be. in my whole life, which mm. has been four, has been I'm on the 15th last of one, May. Obviously. Wow. <laughs> I know. That's kind of incredible. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's lucky but I yeah, liked Laura you. will be the last. Laura will be the last. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, she might ditch me. No. <laughs> and it'll just be Chipova, Chipova. How it was I meant mean. to be. <laughs> <laughs> so um, another thing that we've all bonded over is our love of skirts, yes. which I think when I first met you, I was really nervous to meet you because it turns out I did really like you. You were me, as the all caps email <laughs> told me. Um, but also like, 
I don't know, skirts don't get a lot of love in fashion. It's really, I mean, we're all wearing dresses, but so much of what you see on the runway is really about this total look that's either a combined set or a dress. And those tend to be like the real show pieces that end up going into stores and being shot in editorials. And you've really built your business around this like lesser loved garment. Um, Tell me about the first skirts that you loved in your lives. I think we were both very skirt people. We were skirt people. We actually said this to each other like one of the first days we met. We were like, it's it's skirts. (laughs) Jumpers and skirts or shirts and skirts. But you're right. I think it's much less of a thing because also like it's like a full look when you get a dress. Mm -hmm. But like skirts are like more... You have to like make them work with stuff, yeah. but or not, or not make we them work. love or not make them work. But um, I loved my first skirt that I loved was um like Bulgarian pleated skirts, which is like the obvious answer. But that's actually what made me love skirts. They're like the skirt that made us design our skirt is like a, a Bulgarian traditional skirt, which is like three quarter goes around your back. Um, and it, like, warms the woman's ovaries when she's on the field. And that's, like, the traditional reason why it was designed. And it's pleated so that it's just warmer. So it's, like, more condensed wool. Um, and it's the skirt. I wore the full costume for, like, four years during CSM. Really? Like, every day yes. I was in, like, a traditional, like, three-piece women's Can anyone else vouch for this well, I think, in the room? I think someone can. I can. <laughs> 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 okay. So that's what made me love skirts. Yeah, I do remember it as well. You coming in with like a flat, you used to wear a flat one and then a pleated one around the yeah. other side. Like, it took what me a while to, to start wearing them all the time because I went from New Jersey to like CSM in like I mean, a year. It warm, yeah, it took us all a while. Yeah, it took us yeah. all a while. Yeah, notably diverse New Jersey. <laughs> notably diverse New Jersey. <laughs> and the countryside, yeah. come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. same thing. Just walking around dungarees for a long time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my first obsession of skirts was probably um when I bought my first kilt which um I think we bought on the BA when we went to like a market in London and I found this amazing blue and green tartan skirt kilt and I was just like I have to buy it and then I like obsessively bought kilts and I owned up like 55 I think it was (laughs) yeah I would actually go to like New Jersey um like thrift stores and like everything and like buy Laura um just different colored kilts. D- different kilts and like bring them over in like suitcases over Christmas wow. every year I have a lot of kilts that's friendship though yeah. that's friendship importing mm-hmm. kilts from New Jersey I know, I know, I know. But you should really famous get New Jersey for kilts yeah <laughs> I was like where are you finding these Did kilts in New Jersey they, the thing is they must have come from somewhere because there's so many and they're amazing in central New Jersey in like I mean in our New Jersey well in my New Jersey, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah in We're central New Jersey parts. well I'm from central New Jersey mm-hmm. so in central New Jersey okay <laughs> in Emma's New Jersey <laughs> Um, how do you decide what you want to wear every day? I'm, I can say we all got dressed together for this <laughs> podcast slash dinner experience, and it was a... It took three hours. Three hours. <laughs> it was Only a three because hour. you wanted to try on every dress. <laughs> <laughs> can you blame me? <laughs> They're all in the studio. <laughs> but how do you sort of, when you're designers and you have this seemingly infinite wellspring of garments to wear that you've made you know it's women designers designing for women how do you choose what you want to wear we actually recently well over the past year have actually now gotten our own triple valuana clothes and built like a wardrobe and I think that we basically can't not wear something every day it doesn't feel right yeah but you also like go through phases of them don't you because you we spend like the whole season looking at a bunch of clothes and then yeah. you get a delivery of the next of the last kinds and you yeah. fall back in love with the last ones so and I go through phases again I get obsessed with one skirt and like keep wearing that for like two weeks and then choose a different one but in like a bigger sense it's so nice because it like just makes you feel the most you so mm-hmm. yeah it's like really I can't good. wear anything else now because no. it just feels weird yeah how does how has wearing the clothes impacted the way that you design them? Like now that you go about every day of your lives, you were saying you bike to work, you're going to the studio, we're all carrying a bunch of bags. Has that impacted the way that you've considered designing all the elements? 
I think so. I think that we're also like not like we have different bodies, like like the two of us, and also like we have different bodies and models. And I think that we think about ourselves and we think about our friends and like that makes that's Mm -hmm. the biggest impact, I think. Because every time we're like, is this gonna be comfortable? Is this gonna be like flattering to this? Like we always try to think about that. Yeah, different shapes. Yeah. Boobs. Yeah. Like exactly, it's it's been a long. Is it adjustable? Yeah, like we love an adjustable mm-hmm. dress and skirt. Oh yeah, yeah. pleats are the best. Yeah, yeah. zippers, snaps. zippers, snaps. snaps. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's so good because you can like what you learn quickly is you can never please the market with sizing, and you can also like it's so hard to sell bigger sizes because like stores are not like the most supportive because I think that it's not like maybe common to the most like. I don't know. I don't know why it is, but like even on our site, like we struggle to sell bigger sizes, even though we want to make bigger sizes. Um, so it's yeah, it's hard the sizing thing. So we really love adjustable clothes. Yeah, Everyone's just not used to it. Yeah, but I think they should get used to it. Yeah. And it's hard because our like our site is the one that carries the bigger sizes, yeah. but no one really shops there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you heard yes. it here first yes. on the list podcast. Um, Chapova Luena <laughs> co.uk <laughs> no just dot com dot com sorry I <laughs> did that into chipovaluana.com yeah, please visit <laughs> um but no it's true I think like the dress you're wearing has adjustable snaps and this has yeah. adjustable zippers and everything is sort of elastic and I will say that living through lockdown and seeing all of our bodies change as a result of that it's been reassuring to feel like I can always put on a chipova skirt or top and it will sort of adjust meet me where I'm at yeah, Which that's I think is, really nice to hear. I, I really, so. I really want that. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'm going to grill you about some of your favorite fashion items. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no. <laughs> um, do you remember the first garment that you loved? It doesn't have to be a fashion garment, but just the thing that you were like, this is when I feel the most me. I think that growing up in New Jersey, I did not know, I didn't have anything like vintage or like, you know, it was like the mall. Yeah. And then I think when I came here, I started like buying vintage clothes and like, I started feeling like myself. I think like the the first treasure thing I bought was like from the Dover Street Market sale (laughs) where I got my first like calm skirt. And then it was like, it's still something I treasure. Um, And that's probably the first thing I, I loved. I don't even know. Oh, my Chipotle Luana. My, my wedding dress. Your, your, your kilt. My so kilt. wedding dress. Let's talk about your wedding dress for a second. Oh, I talk about it too much. <laughs> no, you don't talk about it enough. <laughs> um, so Emma and Laura designed together Laura's wedding dress, which is a beautiful rendition of a spring... 2020 I think Olivia Olivia. Olivia. spring 2021 2021 dress that Emma hand beaded and embroidered flowers on the collar was that difficult to choose to make your own wedding dress it was really hard because I didn't really know what I wanted and also there's like so much pressure for you to like like when you go to a wedding dress shop, you try it on, you're like, oh, this is the one. And you're making it and you try it on and you're like, I don't know. Like, yeah, cool. It's white. And I think it kind well, of Well, it was like, hard to make a white dress. Uh, yeah. Number Even one, though we hard. make white dresses all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to make a white dress. Also, I wanted a colorful dress. Yeah. And then I tried it on and I was like, gross. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, maybe I'll just be traditional. Because I was like, I don't want to be traditional. I'm not traditional. And then I was like, actually, I'm going to do this. I might as well just like try it. And then I loved it. But in the end, I felt like really me and really special. And the fact that like Emma beaded the collar and it was so special and so pretty. And we did the jewellery and the brooches. Yeah. yeah. And the buckles, I searched for like three months to find these perfect like Victorian buckles. And each one was different. And then it fit me like a glove. The seamstress, our seamstress had to take it apart twice because I tried it on and I was like, it's not perfect. And then <laughs> Emma was like, just get her to come back. So Svetlana, thank you, came back and like took it all apart, put it all back together, wow. got a skirt to go underneath, and it was perfect. Mm-hmm. I loved it. And you made all the bridesmaids' dresses. Yeah. 
Yes. And the, Ida's collar. And Ida's collar. I mean, for, mm-hmm. yeah, she looked amazing. I need mean that. So. Emma did make Just that. on the record. Yeah. <laughs> and have you gotten any bridal requests since? We I talked about know. making my, I'm not getting married, but we did talk about making my wedding dress the other <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, we, we did get one yesterday, so. We get bridal requests <laughs> quite, actually quite often, but they're usually just for like, uh, just clothes that we already make. <laughs> just mm-hmm. like people want, trying to find like old white dresses that, like, that we've made like past seasons that they want to get married in. Yeah, which is nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we have. Um, so as far as, objects the one that got away we were going through the racks in your studio there were some past collections where we were like oh I wish we had that I wish we ordered that I wish we had this thing I should have bought this when it was available what are the things that you wish you had oh I don't know things that go away I think in the beginning we were scared to order anything from her for ourselves because it like cost money to do that <laughs> So we were like, no, 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 let's not. And now I think we regret not having some of that, the first, the first. Yeah, the crazy things that aren't wearable. Yeah. Like one of the MA skirts, maybe. Or just like those (laughs) first things that we put into production that was completely unwearable (laughs) that we made like two of. Yeah. Yeah. But the the leotard made out of pink blankets. That was a good one. (laughs) That was a good one. Yeah. (laughs) There's about like 4,000 Chipotle dresses that have gotten away from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can try them all on later. Thanks. I'll, I'll try them on. <laughs> um, and is there something that you're currently obsessing over now? I don't know how to answer You're both that. wearing um, tabbies. Yeah, because they're like a classic good investment, aren't they? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like we're, we want to be like I'm, wise shoppers. Yeah, I <laughs> oh, wish shoppers. I had worn a pair. <laughs> the, I think this is Laura's first pair. I actually don't pair. own any. They're so good. How <laughs> I know. Them? I knew you were going to guess. <laughs> How dare you? I, well, we, in our defense, in, in the car ride over here, we were looking to buy some. <laughs> yeah. Before we got in the car. Before we got in the car. We were waiting for the car. We were trying to pick out a pair. But it does, are your toes not? No, um, they're so comfortable. I only wear like Doc I'm Martens I'm sorry, and now I've embarrassed myself on the list podcast. <laughs> Steph, how dare you? They're so comfortable. Okay. <laughs> but Emma told me that I would look really silly in them. Also that, because I just wear trainers and Doc Martens and she says that I need to have grown up shoes. Yeah. So this these is what, the mm-hmm. so these are my first grown up shoes and I love mm-hmm. them. Well, I will say my first shoes that I remember picking out and buying were Doc Martens when I was in Catholic school. It was like the only thing you could have to rebel. I mean, I think I was five, but I was like, I'm so hardcore. (laughs) (laughs) And like every shoe I've bought since is just like another version of a Doc Martens. In the same way that like when you're a child and you have Mary Janes, like you just sort of keep buying the same thing. There's something about Mary Janes. (laughs) <laughs> there's just something about were it were you trying to make a pun on the name of the movie <laughs> <laughs> no um, they're just the best shoe that's all I'm going to say <laughs> <laughs> and is there one um, fashion item or piece of jewelry or accessory that you own that like your house is on fire and you've got you can only save one thing what is it oh. god forbid obviously Ida <laughs> that's a that's a job. That's a per- I almost said that's a person. <laughs> that is, is a person. A, she's, a person. <laughs> she's a person to me. Um, no, I don't think just so. our uh, Chipotle on archives. To be honest, I think I would save my Dover Street Market purchases <laughs> <laughs> over our oh, clothes. Yeah. <laughs> I have like one coat, and that's your com like, coat. Yeah, that's my most oh, wow. special item. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it on the last day when it was 70% off. It's my most special item. <laughs> I would save my first Chipotle on a dress. Aw, thank you. <laughs> it's a very special dress. It is. It was we the had, first ever belted dress. Yeah, and it was, well, I had only bought skirts and it was the first dress. And then it was the last thing I really ever wore before COVID. Aww. I remember you coming to the showroom and we were like, we designed yeah. this for you. <laughs> Aww, and you're like you better like it and you're like I love it so yeah. like, okay fine and then during the pandemic I used to wear it just around my house Aww. which is funny because we talked we talked very frequently over 2020 and 2021 every time 
I would get dressed, I would be like, it's like we're together. Because, and now it's just so surreal to be together. It's so surreal. It's really strange. Yeah. Um, Well, thank you everyone for coming and listening to this podcast recording. Um, I hope you listen to the rest of this season of List Podcast. And we did promise that we're making a special playlist featuring all of the musicians that have worn Chipotle Luena. Oh, okay. <laughs> so right. stay tuned for that. That's sponsored by Spotify. <laughs> um, Spotify, Spotify needs to get in touch with us. We'll get in touch with them. <laughs> um, but thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.